Hi guys, my name is Cash and you're watching Cashed Out Cars and in today's video we're doing a review of a 2006 Volkswagen Passat VR6 4Motion. So I know that's a mouthful. This is the top of the line Passat that was offered in 2006. And today we're gonna do an in-depth review of it after my 7,000 miles and six months of ownership. So to start things out, I bought this car because it was something different than what I had in the past. So my previous cars were all Volkswagen Golfs. I had a Mark V Rabbit, I had a Mark V GTI, and I had a Mark VII GTI. Now I also have a Miata, but that's really my fun weekend car. And my other Volkswagens were more of the daily driver category like this thing is. So I had some problems with my GTIs and I wanted to get something slightly different and I was looking around and this to me basically looked like the ultimate budget luxury cruiser. So I bought one. Um, the reason that I mainly bought this is for the exhaust note, which I'll talk about a little bit later in this video. So basically, this car is a lot more luxurious than a GTI. It's a much different driving experience. So if you think you really, really want something sporty and you don't want to have something a little bit more comfortable, just stop watching now because you probably should be looking at a GTI or some sort of sports car, not necessarily this Passat VR6. But if you're interested in something that's a little bit more Grand Tory, something that's great to just drive around in, have a good amount of power, and have a good time with an excellent exhaust note, keep watching this video because the Passat VR6 could be for you. So we're gonna do a little pull here off of the stop sign. And that brings me to the first part of this video that I wanna talk about, which is the engine and exhaust note of this car. So the Passat VR6 has a 3.6 liter VR6 engine that shares a lot of components with a 3.2 liter engine, which is in the Volkswagen R32. So if you like the R32 and don't have money for an R32, but you wanna sound like you have one, this could be the car for you. Now, this car makes 280 horsepower and 265 foot-pounds of torque. So it's not slow, it has plenty of grunt, especially on the low end, and it sounds great when you rev it out on the high end. The rated zero to 60 of this car is also no slouch. This thing is rated at doing zero to 60 in around six seconds, sometimes just under. Do note that the front wheel drive model is often reported as putting down faster zero to 60 times than the VR6 4 motion, which is what I have. And the reason for this is less weight and less complexity in the drivetrain, so it gets up and going a little bit faster than this, but both of these cars are not slow by any means. They could very close to hold up to a GTI in a straight line. There's no doubt that the GTI is slightly quicker and it feels a bit quicker because this car is way more comfortable and has softer suspension, but both of them will get up and going fairly quick and they won't leave you desiring more power. One of the trade-offs of having this wonderful VR6 is the fuel economy isn't great. So gas mileage in this thing driving around, I normally get between 25 and 28 miles per gallon highway, which isn't bad, but it could be a little bit better. And around town, obviously I get less than that, normally around 20 if I'm just cruising around town with a lot of stop signs and stoplights. In my opinion, the power trade-off and the noise trade-off is well worth it. So the exhaust note on this car, like I said, is why I bought it. These cars sound absolutely fantastic, opened up just a little bit, and even stock. If you're interested in one of these, just for the sound, even the stock exhaust note sounds great, but I did a resonator delete to make it sound a little bit more aggressive. I get some burbles and pops on acceleration, and all in all, if you want one of these cars for the sound, I would recommend doing slight modifications to open it up, but no matter what, these cars sound fantastic. So moving on with this review, I wanna talk about the interior of this car and the luxury features that it comes with. So this car is the luxury model. There's a base model, there's a sport model, and a luxury model, and this is the luxury model. Now, initially, when I was looking for one of these cars, I wanted the sport model, and I wanted the sport model in a wagon. 
Um, I got a little impatient and really just wanted to pick something up and this one came up really clean. So this is the luxury car with the luxury packages and you get a lot of really cool stuff with it. So for 2006, it has a lot of neat options. Some notable ones are we have completely electronically controlled seats in the front with savable positions. This means backrest angle you could adjust, bottom of the seat angle you could adjust, bolstering position you could adjust, and the seats are really just pretty cool and pretty advanced for something that's a 2006. Also, they're heated and they have dual climate control, which is very nice if you're in a colder environment and want to have a toasty back and not wait for the heat to actually get up to temperature. And all in all, that's a very nice feature. Also, this car has automatic lights and windshield wipers, which is a feature that I didn't think I would use very much or like particularly, but after using them, it's something that is uh, something that I wouldn't want to give up with a car like this. Other neat features is an auto dimming rear mirror, a sunroof that tilts and slides, heated mirrors, and also electronically adjustable mirrors. And finally, some funny stuff like a glove box on the driver's side and the passenger side, as well as umbrella holders in the door. So for the price, you get a lot of cool luxury features with this that you wouldn't get in other cars like say a GTI. Do another little pull here since we could. Guys, that exhaust note really is fantastic. I can't stress that enough. It is the reason that I bought this car, but it is not the reason that I like this car and enjoy driving it around. Because pretty much everything about this car is enjoyable and the exhaust note really just tops everything off and is fantastic. So getting back to interior quality and luxury features, the actual quality of this interior is very nice. Like I said, mine is the luxury package with wood trim and nice comfy seats. Also available is the sport package, which has very, very nice sport seats and aluminum trim in here, which like I said, is what I want, but I have no regrets getting this luxury package. The sport package also comes with stiffer, more aggressive suspension, but for this car, I like it being a luxury cruiser and being soft and a very comfortable ride. I'm gonna talk about the ride more after, but getting back into just the interior of the car, Everything's nice. There's leather. Everything has a nice soft touch coating on it. Even though that coating is slightly prone to peeling, it looks good and it feels good. And the interior just is very nice for a car of this price point. One last thing before I get into how this car drives, I want to go over how it looks. So from the outside, I didn't initially love how the B6 Passat looked. Um, I didn't really love how the headlights have that cut out there and I thought the car was a little bit girly at first and not something that I particularly wanted to own but since I picked this up my thoughts on it have significantly changed I think it's actually a very good looking car I think it's subtle and understated but it looks great so being a luxury class four-door car like it is I think it's very nice and one of the best looking ones that you could get on the VR6 4 motion, you get a dual exhaust that looks fantastic. Uh, you get 17 inch wheels and very, very big brakes, which look great from the outside. And all in all, I think this car just, it, it looks nice. I mean, it's nothing extremely exotic and special, but I think every angle of this car looks good. Now we'll move into how these Passats drive. So mine, I know I've said it a million times, it's a VR6 4 motion, so it's the heaviest model available but it has the most power and it has four wheel drive, of course. So this car is definitely a little bit heavy feeling. It's definitely not the most sporty ride and compared to the GTIs, it's way softer and it rides over bumps a lot smoother. Now, I really like that because coming from a GTI, it's a nice change to have something that's really enjoyable to cruise around in that's comfortable pretty much all the time. Also, the exhaust note is not loud. It's just very subtle and sounds good. Um, even with the resonator delete that I did, it's still very quiet and not obnoxious whatsoever. So cruising around just like this, I can't even really hear the exhaust right now at just under 2000 RPMs. But once I get on it, it just reminds me that it's there. So if you don't want something too loud, um, 
this is something for you because the exhaust note is great. If you want something comfortable to just drive around in, this is fantastic because it's comfortable and easy to use and just an enjoyable drive. Coming back to handling characteristics, it definitely, like I said, feels heavy and it's floaty over bumps and through faster turns. Now, if you're getting a car like this, you probably don't need it to handle like a race car and it certainly doesn't. But like I said, the ride has the compromise of being extremely nice and smooth to just cruise around in. So now we can get into one thing that I dislike about this car driving it around. And that is the brake feel. So the brakes on this car, obviously it's not a race car, but they're not very firm and they don't have that much initial bite. Now they're huge brakes and they look great and they look like they should stop the car and they do when you really get on them, but initial bite isn't that great. Once again, I know it's not a sports car, it's not a race car and uh, stepping on the brakes, I shouldn't expect braking like a GTI, but I would prefer if they were just a little bit sharper initially. Other than that, I really don't have too many complaints driving this thing around. It has good power down low. Um, it feels really good cruising around and all in all, it's an enjoyable car to drive. Before we wrap up this review here, I wanna go over a couple small cons of this car. And one of the cons is you can't get a VR6 4 motion with the manual transmission. And to me, that's a downside because I really like driving manual transmissions. And this car made me step away from a manual to get something that, like I said, was more of a luxury cruiser and is just different than what I'm used to. Now, do I wish it was a manual? Absolutely, driving a manual is way more fun and that's why I liked all my other GTIs and that's why I like my Miata so much because it's fun, sporty, and being a manual is just more engaging, hands down, no questions. This automatic is not great, it doesn't shift very fast and there's definitely a um, delay between shifts and it's not very snappy or smooth, but once again, it's not a race car. So if you're just driving around, it's something that you could get over. Another con, which is a major con of this car, is earlier models had a catastrophic failure, which they used a bolt in the oil pump that would back out and basically blow up your engine. So it's a little bit risky to get one of the older versions of this car. I have a complete video that outlines all common problems of the Passat B6 with the VR6, with the 4Motion, and with the 2.0-liter turbo engines. So if you're interested in that, check it out on my channel. But really, there's not too many downsides of this car that I could find. Yes, the gas mileage isn't great, but it's not horrible, and there are good trade-offs of getting slightly worse gas mileage. So guys, with all that said, that's gonna wrap up this review of this Passat VR6 4Motion. So would I recommend this car? I absolutely would if you're in the market for just a comfortable car that has plenty of power, sounds great, and will get you where you need to go. So there are a couple cons like I talked about. You can't get it in a manual. The brakes don't always feel fantastic. And all in all, it's a little bit of an understated car and not super sporty. But if that's what you're looking for, this could be the next car for you. So please like this video if you liked it. Comment anything that you think about the Passat VR6 that I might not have mentioned in this video. Subscribe for more, and I hope to see you at the next one. Take care.